This episode is about critters. Welcome back to Beach Theory. <laughs> we are in episode or season two, and we're going to be talking about some more fun stories from our childhood today. Specifically, critters. Critters. So, I think I'll start the show. <laughs> if I don't mind, if I do. In growing up in Florida, there's there a lot was of critters. Always critters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. One of my favorite things to do is, like, ever since I can remember as a kid, is we would go outside and we would catch lizards. When we were growing up, we, we there was lizards all over our yard, everywhere in Florida. They're not that common here in Utah. I feel like they were very common when I lived in Helper. Lizards? I saw, we saw lizards all the time. Okay. But we used to catch... So what was cool is there they, we had all these lizards all over the place and we and it was always a challenge. I remember when it was hard to catch lizards and then it got to a point where it was really easy just cuz I got really good at it. Uh, but there were just these gray lizards and every now and they were big and they had big long tails and you try to catch them and sometimes you miss and you only get the tail and the tail starts wiggling around everywhere and that's really cool. Kind of gross sometimes. Yep. <laughs> but yep. there were these gray lizards and we'd see them sometimes doing push-ups like Yeah, why did they do that? And then they'd stick out their strawberry. That's what oh, we call Oh, yeah, their it. strawberry because they had this little red flap <laughs> underneath their chin. They go push-ups. It reminds <laughs> me of like the dinosaur, the little lizard dinosaur thing in Jurassic Park. Like when it's in the rain and it's like... Wah! Oh, the thing with the big yeah, face? Like, <laughs> yeah, that. And it like sprays stuff on yes. the guy's face. So it's kind of the same thing. It just has this big flap of skin right underneath their neck that you that they would push out. And sometimes as kids, we'd pull it out because it was cool looking and it was all red and it looked like a strawberry. And it was all like gray, completely gray, except for the strawberry that thing. I remember the ones that we used to catch as kids always had a blue tail. Oh, it was like a shimmery weird. blue tail. But all the rest of it was like the same color as the ones in Florida. They're just like gray. Okay. But we would pop the tails off i remember that it was not very nice but they said it would grow back and i remember popping tails off of blue tailed lizards whatever i'm not sure what they were but so one of our favorite types of lizards it was weird because they were all gray and they had the strawberry and every now and then like maybe for every 10 lizards we would find a green one and we'd call it a chameleon because it could actually change colors Ooh. Yeah, but the size, the same size as the other ones. Uh, they're a little bit smaller and slender, oh. but not much. And if you actually look up a knoll, a n o l e, that's how you spell it. That's the type of lizard that it was. We called it a chameleon. It was technically called an anole, uh, but it was green and it would change colors based on what it was around. But it could only change to green or gray. Oh. But it was most of the time very green, and it also had a strawberry. Um, so we'd catch gnolls all the time. The blue one, oh, you're looking at pictures. Is that the type that you'd catch? That blue one right there? She's looking at pictures. It's like this. Oh, okay. Because if you go to the other one, those are we'd catch those ones. Other one? Which other one? That one like right that? there. Ew, yeah. It looks like a snake. It's We, we called yeah. it a skink. I think these are called skinks. Yep, western wow. skink. Wow. Here, I'm going to show it. Show the camera. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see... You, you will be able to see the lizards that we're talking about. This is a skink. I saw that and I was like, ew, that looks gross and disgusting and creepy. Just like this. Sorry, you can't hear me. One time we found one just like this, but it had a blue tail. But it had like <laughs> green and orange and red. And it literally was a rainbow. <gasps> that would be... Did you and get I a picture? I, I did. I took a picture of it. I have really? it in an old photo album somewhere. Who knows where. Wow, that's so cool. But it was really cool. A skink? Skink. Rainbow We'd skink. Find it. A rainbow skink. We found skinks. We found lizards. We found anoles, and we'd sometimes we'd find geckos. Um, we'd usually find geckos inside the house, but they had like transparent skin. It was like wow. see through, and they'd stick to the ceiling and Ew, that go all over the house. Me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as as I started to get older and as I became a teenager, um, we would started catching snakes like lizards. That's baby stuff. We're going to catch snakes now. And so we'd catch mostly black rat snakes. The one I, I have a picture of one that's way cooler than that. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like it's Dude, vibrant. I don't know why, but these things creep me out. Like I am getting a little bit of chills just looking really? at them. They just It's like a mix between a lizard and a snake. But it's You're looking like, at the skinks? 
Yeah. Yeah. It just, it creeps me out. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Is it like that? Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, well. Can't find one. No, it's like that. So the one that we looked at a picture of, it was black with a blue tail. Yeah. But I found the one that was like the entire body was uh, like a rainbow. Like it started out that one color. So cool. And then it went to a different color, a different color, to blue and then purple. See, I, if you haven't noticed on the Beck and Ryan show, and this is sad because Ryan's not gay, but I always <laughs> put rainbow colored things on him. <laughs> Like his hair and his like mustache. Like his hair and his mustache. But it's because I love rainbow colors like so, so much. And so it always makes him too. look like when gay, I was, but he's not. When I was in elementary school for the couple years that I went, I loved Lisa Frank. Yes, me too. That was the kind of notebooks and pencils and everything that I <laughs> always wanted. I'm going to show a picture <sighs> of Lisa Frank. <laughs> So Lisa Frank is like the most colorful possible glittery, gorgeous rainbow colored notebooks and pencils. And Every time we were getting like school supplies, n- noob folders or whatever for the year, I was like, oh, that's the one I want. <laughs> so colorful. I wonder why you got teased though. <laughs> I didn't actually get them. Oh, okay. My mom talked me out of it. She oh. had good common sense. She's like, no. Trust See, this me. is why homeschool's yeah. good because you could do whatever you want. You could get that. You could get that notebook, and it's okay. Yeah, that's right. You not be made fun of, and it is all right. <laughs> um, Love that notebook. So yeah, as we got older, um, we had. Oh, I remember. So in our in one of the houses when we lived in Pine Hills, we had a screen porch in the backyard, and kids. Oh, speaking would leave. of, let me just clarify something. If you're not from Florida, you probably don't know. That the outside is just crawling with all sorts of alive things everywhere, always. <laughs> and they literally have to have screened in porches, like porches that are, are basically a whole big family room that's completely screened in so they can enjoy time outside. Though there's one reason why you need a screen porch in Florida. Mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason. No, and there's... Ants and bugs ants and lizards in. and snails and ants, uh, we snakes had ants that and got into our screen porch. iguanas. Let them in. It's the mosquitoes There's that you There's all don't want. sorts of critters. <laughs> so in our screen porch. Kids, and yeah, mosquitoes are just the most horrible thing ever. That invented. was the one oh. reason. You don't want you to can't, be You just can't even enjoy. It's sad because it's like Florida's so beautiful. But you can't spend time in it. <laughs> can't outside. get away from that state bird, <laughs> the mosquito. <laughs> so kids would leave the door open on the screen porch all the time, and so flies would come into the screen porch, and they'd be on all the screens trying to get out. Of course, like hey, we're trying. What do we do? And we so as kids, what we'd do is we'd go up to the screen, we'd put our hand on the screen, and there'd be a fly underneath our hand between the screen, and we would kind of crumple our hand together until we had the fly in our fingers. Pull off the wings, <laughs> and then it would it walk around, and it was like funny to make fun of the fly because now it can't fly. Aww. And then we'd feed it to the lizards that we'd go catch. So we'd have like this bucket full. Oh, we were kids. Michael's a boy. He is one hundred percent boy. <laughs> we, so we'd have a bucket full of lizards with a couple of leaves and sticks. So it felt like it was in a good habitat. I'm gonna go get my bucket of lizards. <laughs> and then we'd. Grab a lizard, and if you... Hand if, me that wingless fly over there. <laughs> if you touch the sides of the lizard's mouth, it would open its mouth, and that's how you'd get it to eat the flies. And then you'd shove the fly into its mouth, and it would swallow it, and that was good fun. Push his canine, and it'll open his mouth. Have you ever heard that? What? <laughs> They're like a dog. If you push a certain tooth... They'll open their mouth, but oh. you do that with horses too. You can, if you push oh. a certain tooth, they'll open their yeah, mouth. Yeah, if you if you just squeeze the sides That's of their canine. face, then the lizard will open their mouth. Yeah, <laughs> That's a trick. Because sometimes if you put their your finger right on the tip, on like the nose, on the snout or whatever, the lizard doesn't open its mouth. But if you grab the sides, then it'll yeah. open its mouth up wide. And that's how you shove the, liz- the, the fly in there. <laughs> like they wouldn't just eat it. They were probably full all the time because right. there's so many bugs there. <laughs> oh and spiders Maybe. spiders we didn't even say spiders oh my goodness yeah i don't like florida spiders. has the most gigantic terrifying non-poisonous or venomous spiders though yeah. right or do they have poisonous they have some venomous ones they have black uh, widows and black brown recluses and i've never heard 
of you seeing a black widow in Florida? I didn't see them very often. They're not as common as they're out here. Out, out here, they're everywhere. Black yeah. widows are everywhere. I'm sure we have like 10 in our house right now. Yeah. Death. Certain <laughs> death. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway. In the garage, I squish one the other name. Then as we grew up, <laughs> we started catching snakes. So we'd catch black rat snakes. Corn snakes were the most common. And... Once we started catching snakes, we had to build, we were older, of course, so now we knew a little bit more, like we'd make a way cooler habitat. So we had these big like (laughs) old terrariums that were for fish, but we'd fill it up with sand and rocks and leaves and then we'd put the snakes in there. And what was really fun, so okay, snakes were a lot more aggressive and you did not want to get bit by a snake. Mm -hmm. Even if it was just a black black rat snake or a corn snake, because it would still hurt, even though they're non-venomous, it still hurts and you'd bleed. Not like a lizard where their teeth are too small to make you bleed. Yeah. But what was really fun is taking the snakes. So we couldn't sit there and just feed the snake a lizard to a snake. But we could put the lizard in the habitat with the snake. And you had to be really patient because the snake right off the bat is kind of uncomfortable that it's in this terrarium. But after a couple hours, you put a lizard in there and they go they're, hunt. Their stomach starts to rumble. Yeah. And they see that lizard and it's like... Whew, they're ready. And you're like sitting there for two hours watching water And so water we'll sit boil. there and watch them. And it's so much fun. And we actually have some videos of the snakes catching <gasps> lizards and eating them. But you sit there and you watch as the snake gets closer and closer. Or the lizard just kind of obliviously running, like trying to find an escape, not realizing that it's right in front of the snake. And then the snake, <laughs> and we'll eat it. And it's so cool. That was a scary sound effect. That was, <laughs> that's, it's, crikey, it's a big one. <laughs> And so then it would like catch the lizard right in its mouth and then the snake would like slowly start to pull the lizard deeper, deeper, deeper into its mouth. Alive. Literally eating the lizard alive until it finally slurps the tail and then it's like... Oh, he slurped the tail. Looks (laughs) like he's done with his meal. Lump of lizard going through the snake's body. Oh, that's so creepy. That's cool. One time when I lived in Florida after we were married, I went we went to the beach and I was walking on the beach and I had walked from the beach to like the parking lot and I was on my way walking back to the beach and there was this it looked like a rope strung across the pathway um from one bush cuz it was like it was like one bush to another bush. Um, it was a cut, a pathway through there. But that snake, there was a snake and it was going from one bush to the other bush and it literally looked like a giant pink rope. And it was a coral snake. No, it was not a coral. It was a coral, coral snake. Coral snakes are not pink. What what do coral <laughs> snakes? Well, uh, or I remember you looking it up or I'm saying king snake or something. Was if it, it was... A, is a king snake pink? No. What was it? What's a pink snake? I don't know what a it pink snake is. It was a huge, is. like, it was pro. It was, it was so long and it was so big. It was probably like this big, like the thickness of a soda pop can. There's no pink snakes in Florida, babe. Oh yes, there is. I saw one. I'm not seeing any <laughs> pink snake anything. You know what? You tell critter stories. I'm gonna find it on my phone and I'm gonna <laughs> prove it to you. No, no pink snake. Here's a really fun story, though. I'm I'm excited to tell you this story. So one time, I was it was raining. Okay, and in Florida, that's really normal. But in front of our front door, we had this like placemat kind of thing. It was like astroturf, basically. Uh, but it would always collect the rainwater and it would get wet. And so even when the cement of the sidewalk had dried, that little mat had is actually a pretty big size mat. It would stay wet. Well, one time it had recently rained, but the cement was dry. Yeah, like that. Uh, that color. That's not pink. That's a corn. That looks like a Florida king snake. It says. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, okay. King snake. Right. It was a king snake, not a coral snake. Coral snake is red tetrazella, blah, 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 coral blah. Coral snake blah. is very venomous. Yeah, not that. Okay. But it was a king snake and it looked pink to me, but this is what it was. I'll show you a picture. It was huge. Huge. And so scary. And I just stood there and watched it slowly crawl over. Thank you. I I just watched it slowly crawl over the pathway. And it was so big and so scary. And I just was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And then it went through. And I finally was like, ah! And I ran through. (laughs) And I was like, Michael, I just saw the giant snake. Ah! (laughs) Okay. Back to my story. (laughs) Wait, is this poisonous? No. 
see i don't even know this thing. michael knows like i could ask him probably about any snake and he's like no yes no no yes definitely helps if i can see a picture of this also utah's way more scary with spiders and snakes because mostly are rattlesnakes out here which How? you die from okay right utah spiders there might be like black widows which are ven- like and venomous but they brown recluse but the spiders themselves are fewer and far between <gasps> and <sighs> They are not nearly as intimidating as the ones that are the size of your hand. In Florida, which are so scary. But they don't actually hurt you. That's true. That is true. They can't actually hurt you. They just but they're, are big and ugly and scary and gross. I'm sorry, but something as big as... A spider as big as your hand is always <laughs> going to be more scary than a tiny little dot of a spider. A black widow that's like... It, this. T- I think it's more scary because you can't see them almost, but they could kill you versus ones that are like a mouse... Those little black widows are not aggressive. They hide in corners or underneath things. You're you, making me feel creepy you crawly don't even right see now. Them. They're not like, oh, here's a person. I'm going to eat them. Oh, you pinched me. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. Did I get you? That scary. <laughs> that hurt me. You pinched me. I'll p- pinch you. <laughs> pinch. Get out of here. Okay. You get out of here. Let me finish my okay. story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> by the way, I'm going to be bros. I was rudely interrupted. You pinched me. <laughs> you interrupted yourself by pinching me. <laughs> okay. So, it had recently rained, and I was outside on the cement, but I was in my socks. And oh, that's the worst. I didn't want to walk over the wet mat in front of the front door and get my socks all wet. So... There was like these two stone sidings, I guess, and then the door was kind of inset. And so I grabbed onto the wall, stone wall, and then I jumped over the placemat into the front, into the front door, into the entryway. And when I grabbed the wall, and I was like, I grabbed and then instantly jumped without thinking. But when I grabbed, I had noticed as I was in the air, my mind was processing the realization that I had grabbed something kind of squirmy and wiggly. <laughs> so horrible (laughs) and so i put my hands on the wall and it was nighttime so i couldn't really see but i put my hands on the wall i jumped inside and i let go of the wall but i pulled my hands in and i had a snake in my hand (laughs) that i had accidentally caught that's amazing (laughs) because it was because it was on the the stone wall just kind of on that corner (whistles) oh what the the and you happen to grab it in the right spot where you usually catch snakes like right by its head um, I don't remember. All I remember is that I caught a snake. Was it a good snake or a bad snake or a, a kill snake. you snake? I think it was a corn snake. Okay. Which is like um, orange with yellow little s- circles and stripes. And See, stuff. when you say it's like a normal fine snake, if I would have seen that snake, I probably would have been like, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm going to die. Even if I got like, yeah, I would just, I had a friend. I don't wh- know what snakes are good and what snakes are bad. And all I've ever really seen are like rattlesnakes here out in Utah. And those are bad. And, and gardener snakes. Is it gardener or guard, gardener? Garter. Garter. We used to catch garter snakes in Florida. I think that's what they were called. My brother knew the names of the, s- of the snakes better, better than I did. Garter snake. Garter, so not gardener. No, that's a garter snake. But there's also, it's a common snake, harmless. But there is also a snake called a gardener snake, I think. Oh. Gardener snake. This is an episode all about snakes. There's no gardener snake. (laughs) (laughs) There's no gardener snake, just garter snake. Oh, okay. At least in Florida, we'd catch garter snakes. Oh, and glass lizards. We'd we'd catch glass lizards. Those were super rare, but we used to catch those too. What are they? A glass lizard looks like a snake because it has no legs, but it's actually a lizard. Yeah. Like, I think it'd be really cool if we had pictures of each of these types of snakes in the video, yes. uh, in the edit. But yeah, so glass lizards, garter snakes. One time, oh my goodness, one time we found, so as kids, we're always looking for snakes. Like we'd actually go on snake hunts to try and find snakes. Going on a snake But the problem was we'd always find the same types, <laughs> right? So we'd always find corn snakes and black rat snakes and it kind of got boring that it was like always the same. Well, one day we found the most interesting snake we'd ever seen. It was huge 
huge. It was long and it was thick. And we we're like, oh my goodness, mom, we want to catch this snake. But she was like, you can't catch a snake. You got to get your jobs done. Right? <laughs> Talking about that last episode. Am I right? <laughs> so last episode. Anyway. Um, so we're like, crap, we want to catch this snake, but it's going to leave if we don't catch it right now. So Marshall, I think it was Marshall. Maybe I'm just blaming him, but uh, we put a box on top of the snake with and, and a rock on top of it because we were thinking well now it can't get out it'll be here when we get back and then we can catch it and play with it and so we went and got our jobs in as fast as we can probably took us a couple hours who knows when we came back and we moved the box the snake was dead oh. <laughs> <laughs> probably overheated or something yeah in the middle of the sun in the middle of the summer and we all felt so bad we were Aww. like oh and one of my sisters was like it's probably just playing dead it's you know sometimes animals will play dead to escape a predator and uh (laughs) i remember my brother matthew picking it up by the tail and swinging it over his head in a circle like a rope and being like see it's really dead (laughs) (laughs) the things kids do (laughs) and i think i was probably 13 he was probably 11 but that's just the type of stuff we did as kids um and so don't call PETA. <laughs> it's long gone now. I mean, I'm 33, so this was 20 years ago. Can't get after me now. Um, but my mom said, "Well, you killed the animal. That's really sad. We don't want its body to go to waste. So let's make this into a science project, right?" So we were homeschooled. So we're like, "This is an opportunity to learn about." the anatomy of an animal and to learn about its intestines and everything. And so we actually dissected it, dissected it. Yeah. So we dissected the snake. (laughs) Hi, Max. Say hi, everybody. (laughs) So we dissected it. We, we cut through its belly and we pulled out all the organs and we pulled out the bone and then we actually took its skin and we, and the bone and we set it up on top of the fence so it could sun dry. And that way we could like keep the skin because we wanted to Can keep the Can you imagine what skin. your neighbors were thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Max laughed. So, um, but then the next day it was covered in flies. Oh, yeah. And it got really, really nasty, really, really fast. And like, <laughs> but it was still a really fun learning experience. That's cool. <laughs> well, I just remember you saying you stuck one in the freezer once. Oh, yeah. Because I found a coral snake one time. I did find a coral. coral snake. Now, a coral snake, that's like the red touches yellow, you're a dead fellow, oh. right? Yes, that will kill you. So wow. I found it in the yard when I was mowing the lawn. I found it and I was like, oh, 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 like I knew this snake. But it was dead. Just by seeing it, I was like, oh, and I'd never seen one before my whole Whoa. life. But How it was, old were you? Um, I was probably 13 or 14. Okay. But it was already dead. Okay. Actually, I think I was 12. But yeah, it was already dead. Um, and I was mowing the lawn. So I. Uh, and I saw that there were ants on it and it wasn't moving. Okay. It's not moving. There's ants on it. It's definitely been dead for at least a couple hours. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it doing anything. So I picked it up. I showed everybody, took it in the house and I was like, I want to keep this thing forever. It's so cool. <laughs> so I coiled it up and, t- and it looked really, really cool. And then I put it inside of a bowl and then I put the bowl in the freezer. And if we you were ke- my kid. <laughs> we kept that thing for years. Anytime I had a friend come over, I'm like, come look at the coral snake I found. This will kill you <laughs> if it is alive. That was my, that was my favorite Max is so treasure. happy. He's chewing on the microphone stand. <laughs> He's so happy. <laughs> He's going to get shocked. No. Because his little gums are going to gnaw right through the mm, rope. Definitely not. But he's <laughs> hanging on it for sure. <laughs> is that fun? Speaking of wild animals, we got one right here. Yeah. <laughs> He's pulling the microphone right into my mouth. <laughs> You're so silly. Yes, you are. <sighs> well, um, so I remember rattlesnakes being around all the time. We had uh, been building... Our landlord was building an addition onto our house when I was a kid and I remember that we were in the backyard playing and then I think it was me and Steven and Ryan, I think, maybe Jessica, some of the younger kids. Um, we were all playing in the backyard on a tree and underneath us was a rattlesnake. And I remember the construction worker that was working on our house heard us screaming and came over with a shovel and just hacked the thing to death. 
Oh, well, that would have killed us. Did you dissect it? We were literally, it for school? we were literally in a tree above the rattlesnake. Did you dissect it for educational purposes? No, we killed it you so we wouldn't out. die. Dude, if we had found a, a venomous snake like that, I think it would have been so fun to be able to cut open its venom pouches and <gasps> play with it. Play with it. You're like, okay, I that's would what, have died. We, that's what we did as kids. We found creatures and we played with them. Our backyard, we lived, on, dead bodies. we lived on one acre and that entire acre was our playground. That's true. And you needed it because you had a lot of kids in your family. We explored and we, we found all sorts yep. of creatures and we spent hours every day My outside. favorite place to, that we lived in was um, in Fountain Green, Utah. And it was because we, I don't think we had an acre. I don't know if we had an acre, but but the fields, we had tons of fields around us that I never really asked permission if I could go in, but we just went exploring in them all the time. And like, it was so much fun. I remember we found dead cats. We found alive feral cats, which are horrifying, by the way, if you've never <laughs> heard of a feral cat. They're ones that are wild. not tame. They're wild and they will attack you. And they are, cats are vicious. If you know, like when men get in a fight that's like a dog fight when women get in a fight they call it a cat fight that's for a reason because it's vicious and there's like nothing held back and it's horrifying so so a dog fight when the dogs fight it's like uh, and then they both walk away and they're best friends yeah but when it's a cat fight it's like like if i bet on youtube you could look it up and hear a cat fight if you've ever heard a cat fight in real life like cats fighting it sounds i've heard them cough up hairballs and that's terrifying that's terrifying but if you (gasps) have you never heard a cat fight (gasps) no well no yeah you have heard heard a cat fight fight, it's like the most horrifying sound you should look it up on youtube it is actually really terrifying but there was wild cats the all kill. over they really are they're yeah. like they're gonna kill you um and there was it was really sad because we had little kittens that were born from feral cats that most of them died like because the cat wasn't very caring it was like the mom cat yeah it was like a wild i don't know it, I, all don't i know is that we heard would kick in and take- i don't know i mean I would think so, but maybe not because we, um, we knew they were just maybe like a day old or something. And we had found some below a tractor and so sad. One of them was squished flat because the tractor ran over it. And then the other ones were just like meowing and had all sorts of pus in like their eyes and like just covered in like alive, covered in like maggot, you know, like just horrifying and it was like, oh, all we wanted to do was save them, but they were like too far gone. It was really sad. We it was s- gross and yeah. sad. There was, oh, and we found dead dogs, like sheep dogs, because that was mostly what we saw. Because there's lots of sheep in Fountain Green, um, and so like they would have sheep dogs that would that would herd them sometimes, and kind of, I don't know, tell the the, the sheep what to do somehow. <laughs> But I remember going in the middle of the field and walking through and seeing a big, huge white. It looked like um, a cotton ball because it was dead and all of the fur was just fluffy everywhere. It was just kind of in the shape of a dog. It was really gross. <laughs> we used to, find, we used to and, find armadillos dead on the side of the road. Oh, yeah. And raccoons. Well, um, I also remember walking through those fields for one of the last times I walked through the fields because I saw a I think it's called a banana spider it was yellow and black Mm -hmm. and really big and it was strung between like two strands of hay or whatever that were that were grown and I was like oh I guess I can never walk through fields again and for the rest of my (laughs) life because I never want to accidentally walk through that kind of a spider web and die we used to have banana spiders <laughs> in our backyard in Florida all the time. Ugh. Yes. Oh, we had trees. cat head spiders a lot. We had a couple of those. Those are cool looking. Yeah. Well, any other noteworthy wild animals? We had a lot of elk and deer also in Fountain Green. Oh, you guys hit a deer. Did you tell that story already? Oh, we've already? hit so many deer. About the pregnant I think deer? we... Did you oh! Tell that? <laughs> have you told that story on our podcast? I don't think so. Maybe. You guys, we're getting to a point where we have 
told so many stories to you guys like i don't know what we've told and what we haven't and i don't have the time to go back and watch to find out <laughs> so if tell we... us the story of the pregnant deer you guys <laughs> smashed well into. first i'll tell you all the stories about deer one we hit a deer and totaled our a big no we hit an elk and totaled a big white van that was like a 12 seater van um t- completely totaled didn't that your sister lose her driving privileges no she, she didn't lose her she didn't lose her driving pr- driving privileges it's not up to her if the deer jumps in front of her i thought your dad's like you're not driving anymore because he hit just deer got really mad he she totaled i think it was three cars in two months oh man totaled so did she was she still allowed deer. to drive after that she was allowed to drive she was more careful she learned right you, the deer come <laughs> out of nowhere i get it but at the same time there's a certain level of like everybody even my dad hit deer like it's it's not i've hit a deer yeah i have never hit a deer it's because you hardly ever drive no <laughs> no it's true it's because i'm an amazing driver no <laughs> that, <laughs> that, is, that is true it is true i've never had a ticket I've, i do drive. drive now like right now i haven't been driving we only have one car and everywhere we go it's with you so you drive <laughs> anyways you want to change that subject real quick <laughs> andrew you know I'm right. went in the backyard and he was uh in one of the fields in fountain green and he was trying to call elk and um they were it was working but then he hurt his fo- hurt his finger in the chain like he put his finger in the chain of a three-wheeler and it ripped his the tip of his finger off like hamburger sorry if that's tmi <laughs> so, but that's an elk story i guess because he was around elk when it happened <laughs> tell the deer <laughs> tell the pregnant deer and story. then this is one of the saddest things i've ever been through it was really really sad but we had um I'm, I'm gonna give you a warning i might laugh that is rude <laughs> you're laughing oh man it's <sighs> honestly it's not funny but it's more like ironic like unbelievable 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 and because of how unbelievable it is it's almost like comical Ooh, maybe i don't want to tell the story maybe i want to save it for the bowl game tell the story oh Let's All just pretend that none, nobody watches the bowl game. Nice. Go ahead. Nobody watches this, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so we were driving home from the Manti pageant, um, which at night is always so, so late. And I, except I feel like I remember this one being kind of right at sunset. But we were driving and completely in the right spot on the road but a deer jumped in front of us and it was pregnant and we hit the deer so hard and saw a a baby deer shoot out of the deer and cross the road like just splat basically across the road where did it come out of the mom deer the normal places so it didn't like explode her stomach it no it popped out right where yep. it's supposed to it, pop i think out. that deer was so close to being delivering that baby and we just hit it and just right on the side so it jumped in front of our cars driving this way and the deer jumped in front this way and it just hit the deer so hard that the the baby deer popped right out slid across the road and it was like really sad it It was so sad it totaled the car um it was not still in the sack it it had road rash because it it's sandpaper what a way to come into the world can you imagine that uh, <laughs> hey there are human babies that come into a world like that oh. when they get an abortion oh i don't even want to think about that i know me neither it's not funny anymore no i'm not laughing i just it was very sad but i and i don't know if that deer li- lived or not I know the, the mom deer? did not live. The baby deer was still alive. What are, really? The baby deer was alive and breathing and it was just on the side of the road, kind of like, <gasps> baby. Yeah. I don't know. It was alive. It was fine from what I saw. Wow. Um, we called like Fish and Game, which is the place that you call if there's animals in a place that shouldn't be, that are wild animals down there at least well can you i mean there's no way the mom's alive i mean when you think about the explosion that just occurred, i think we killed that that mom but can the you, baby can you imagine what would happen to you as a mom if you got hit so hard in the stomach that it forced the baby to pop right out like that oh, would that, what that would do to your body wow 
I don't see how it would not hurt the baby. I'm sure it did hurt the baby. I bet it hurt the baby a lot. <laughs> yeah. But the baby was alive and breathing. And we happened to have a friend who was also going to the pageant that stopped by um, when we were there that stopped by and saw us and was like, oh, okay, I'll get out and help. And he got out and helped and and was around the baby and stuff. It was just <sighs> really sad. Yeah. It was just sad. But you know what? <sighs> It's funny because we were just watching this thing about Animal Kingdom, Disney World, and how like some animals have died there. And I was like, you know, I don't think people realize just how wild, wild animals the wild, are. The wild. The is. wild. Like animals <laughs> die every day, all the time. They like kill it each is other a very normal thing. Right. It is normal. And not to say that it's okay, but the thing is, we can't humanize it. It's not. And Human, not only do they die every day, but they die in the most like barbaric, gruesome and barbaric way you can imagine. But it's because all the time. they're animals. They are wild. This is their, like, that's how things work in the so wild. So for an animal to die of old age or to die of some disease in a theme park is not any <laughs> worse than what would have probably happened to them if they were living in the wild anyway. I think it's probably way better. Yeah. Because they get like animal, they get treatment from doctors and stuff in the wild no like i've seen like it's like when a turtle gets caught in plastic right and its turtle shell grows and it's grows all malformed because there's no one no doctor there to take the plastic off of the animal like mm -hmm. or like um sometimes i'll see deer that are dead because they got caught in a fence and they could not get free and didn't matter how many other deer were around it saying you can do it <laughs> It's a wild Come animal. On, Billy. Come like on. Th it's sad. It's right. like Bambi, you know, like <laughs> it's sad. Yeah. But that is how it is. The and circle of life. I mean Mufasa got trampled by a herd of wildebeest. Yeah. And so that was made up. That's not gonna happen at Disney. No. At the, at the Magic Kingdom. No, the it's not. Kingdom. They like <laughs> take really good care of animals. That's why it's like I feel like just having them in cages doesn't mean that they're not being well cared for. Most likely they have to keep them well cared for or else they'll just die. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like better <laughs> in a way. Mm -hmm. But anyways, going on a weird tangent about yeah, animals. That's not where we expected to go. Well, we've been to like, we've been to SeaWorld a lot of times and they get so much backlash for having, for being there, for even having any animals in any cages. And but yet, the thing is... The funding that SeaWorld gets from the park is used to help rescue animals. Uh-huh. Like they're they do so way good. more good. They do so much good. And they're not getting good. credit for that. And it's SeaWorld that gets called when people are like on the beach and there's a whale that's been beached, a beached whale, things like that. Right. Like it's SeaWorld that gets called because they know what to do and, and they, they help. The equipment and the and they and usually will take animals in, help them recover Rehab, and then send them back out. Back out. Yep. So it's like the things they do, they're just animal doctors. But people get to see what they do in the process and they happen to be in a cage and then Honestly, people judge them. I think that to be able to go to a place like SeaWorld or the Animal Kingdom and see animals, it, it makes you appreciate them. And if you, if you never see that, it's always this far off thing that you kind of don't care about, you don't really worry about. But when you live in it, it's like growing up in Florida, right? Catching lizards and snakes. I love lizards and snakes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I grew up around them. Yeah. But I don't know jack squat about, you know, other animals in other countries like kangaroos. Like, yeah. I don't know anything about them. I don't really care. Well, actually, you, know? you should because I'm pretty sure Australia is on fire right now. I didn't know Australia was it's burning. Like, it's like so much of Australia has burnt. I did not know that. It's really, really like, bad. Like, I care about animals. Yeah. <laughs> Because I grew up around them, and mm -hmm. if you never have that experience, you you'll never get gain that appreciation. Yeah. So, I think that I think what they're doing is a good thing, and I support it because I, I think, love animals. I think we should get a dog. We got to get a fence first. That's gonna be a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we have a big property. <laughs> oh boy! Well, it was fun talking about wild animals. One time yeah. we found a baby squirrel that fell out of its nest and we tried Aww. to nurse it back to health and it died. One time I had a rabbit. I think I already told this story, but at one time we had a rabbit and it had all these babies and it started eating them, which are, is very normal for rabbits. Speaking of barbaric, but you I tried to nurse them and they died. 
You talked about that in the pets. I mean, episode. not nurse them, like nurse them. I mean, <laughs> I tried to nurse them back to health. <laughs> with like, no, I'm not breastfeeding them. <laughs> Speaking of breastfeeding, that I think you got a, little a bit too far. baby in the other room who's ready for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in to Beach Theory today and learning about all of our wild animal adventures. That was fun. I hope that, I hope you guys appreciated it and maybe you can relate. Maybe you've caught some really cool animals in yeah. your lifetime. But my favorite wild animals are honeybees. Yeah, because they are, they, because they are all slaves to you. No, just kidding, because they all do what you say. I don't and they tell give them you to honey. He doesn't even like honey. He just likes taking care of bees. He really does. Yeah, I love honey. Awesome. So it's a very nice side benefit. <laughs> and I like you, honey. I like you, Mr. King Bee. <laughs> 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 Thank you guys for tuning in to Beach Theory. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And we've got more fun episodes coming very soon, every single week, here on Beach Theory Podcast and YouTube channel. So we'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.